some of the worst atrocities and war crimes committed during the Second World War occurred at the hands of the Japanese army. Millions suffered at the hands of them in the Pacific theatre, and some historians debate whether the conflict actually began years before the Germans invaded Poland, due to the conflict existing between Japan and China. But as the Japanese rampaged throughout different lands, they executed, killed, burned and looted heavily, and some soldiers even had a contest as to how many people they could execute with a sword. The Japanese crimes were endless, and still today many of them remain untold, but in cities such as Nanking, there was horror around every corner. The young and old were affected, and some of the most heinous crimes were committed against women in the Pacific, as thousands found themselves victims of the Japanese army. Join us today as we look at the horrific torture of the women of the Pacific, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Under the command of Emperor Hirohito, the Imperial Japanese Army and the Navy committed numerous war crimes, which resulted in the deaths of millions of people. It's been estimated that through massacre, starvation, experimentation and forced labour, that between 3 and 14 million civilians were killed. The Japanese became one of the most feared opponents in the history of warfare, and they carried out chemical and biological attacks of warfare, but also when they raided settlements, they decimated everyone in sight. Many of these people were innocent civilians, but the Japanese became fearful of Chinese agents and members of the resistance, so to quash this, they often massacred and executed the men on a huge scale. But many of the victims of the Japanese were women, and how they were treated was completely brutal. One of the most shocking war crimes occurred in Nanking, where the advancing Japanese army caused chaos, and for six weeks, large-scale looting, killing, arson and assault took place. The massacre is considered one of the worst of the Second World War, and it's estimated that up to 300,000 people were killed inside of the city, and dozens of thousands of assaults on women were documented. It's believed that over 20,000 women were targeted by the advancing Japanese forces, and Japanese forces would go door to door looking for women, and many were captured and then assaulted. Many women in Nanking were then immediately killed after, and were treated terribly. One reverend documented this in Nanking saying, I know not where to end, Never I have heard or read such brutality. We estimate at least 1,000 cases a night and many by day. In case of resistance or anything that seems like disapproval, there is a bayonet stab or a bullet. People are hysterical. Women are being carried off every morning, afternoon and evening. The whole Japanese army seems to be free to go and come as it pleases, and do whatever it pleases. A surgeon who worked inside of the university hospital even commented on the slaughter of women and civilians, saying... The slaughter of civilians is appalling. I could go on for pages telling of cases of assault and brutality, almost beyond belief. Two bayoneted corpses are the only survivors of seven street cleaners who were sitting in their headquarters when Japanese soldiers came in without warning or reason and killed five of their number and wounded the two that found their way to the hospital. Let me recount some instances occurring in the last two days. Last night the house of one of the Chinese staff members at the university was broken into and two of the women, his relatives, were assaulted. Two girls around 16 were assaulted to death in one of the refugee camps. In the university middle school, there were about 8,000 people the Japanese came in 10 times last night, over the wall, stole food, clothing, and assaulted until they were satisfied. He later also wrote, Two Japanese soldiers have climbed over the garden wall and are about to break into our house. When I appear, they give the excuse that they saw two Chinese soldiers climb over the wall. When I show them my party badge, they return the same way. In one of the houses in the narrow street behind my garden wall, a woman was assaulted, and then wounded in the neck with a bayonet. I managed to get an ambulance so we could take her to the hospital. Last night, up to a thousand women and girls are said to have been assaulted, about 100 girls at the Jinling College alone. You hear nothing but assault, if husbands or brothers intervene, they're shot. What you hear and see on all sides is the brutality of the Japanese soldiers. Many women who were civilians were recruited and forced into becoming comfort women for the Japanese army. These were women who were used inside military brothels in occupied lands. Many were stole from their homes and their homelands and families to be forced to work inside these houses. It's estimated that between 50,000 and 200,000 women were forced into this, and most of the women were from Korea, China and the Philippines, and many women also came from Burma, Thailand, Vietnam and Malaya. These houses were aimed to provide soldiers with women to reduce the number of wartime assaults 
which was causing a rising anti-Japanese sentiment in occupied lands, but these comfort stations actually made things worse. Many young women were abducted from their homes and were forced into this, and many were deceived with promises of factory work or working in other establishments such as restaurants. It was said of these houses that, these were not commercial brothels, force explicit and implicit was used in recruiting these women. What went on was serial assault. The Japanese army's involvement is documented in the government's own defence files. A senior Tokyo official apologised for this horrific crime. But still today it's believed that the Japanese have not fully apologised for these crimes of the comfort women. Many of these women were forced to work as comfort women and they suffered from beatings and other horrors, and many after the war had come to an end, suffered for the rest of their lives from the ordeals. Many had PTSD which lasted even 60 years after the war had come to an end. The Japanese forced many Vietnamese women to become comfort women along with the Burmese and Indonesian women. They were forced to work in comfort stations inside of their lands, and even in countries such as North Korea. One Korean comfort woman stayed behind in Vietnam after the war had ended, and set up a business owning a dairy farm and diamonds worth around $200,000. Some Japanese soldiers also married comfort women, and many children were born to the comfort women, with them being a product of the horror. There were many diseases that spread around the houses. In terms of recruitment, as mentioned, many women were kidnapped and were rounded up on the streets of Japanese-occupied lands and then transported to become servants and slaves. One former comfort woman stated that there was no rest, it was not a place for humans. But after the war had come to an end, the practice did not stop either. The US authorities allowed for comfort stations to operate in the Pacific past the end of the war, meaning that tens of thousands of women were forced to take American clients also, but Douglas MacArthur shut these down in 1946. There were at least 125 comfort stations, and many of the documents regarding these were destroyed by Japanese officials to cover up their crimes. Many women died from transmitted infections and diseases, or from complications from the violent treatment they suffered at the hands of the Japanese soldiers. Many of the women also took their lives as they could not live with the horror. Still today, many former comfort women who are in their 90s speak out about the horrific treatment they suffered at the hands of the Japanese forces. But there were many more atrocities that were committed by the Japanese army against women. In particular was the Banker Island Massacre, in which 22 Australian army nurses were executed on the beach by the Japanese. These women had survived the sinking of the ship the Viner Brook, and many of them had set up a triage tent for the wounded on the beach. The women and the other men went to report to the occupying Japanese forces, and many of the nurses stayed to take care of the wounded in their shelter, which was decorated with a red cross. When the Japanese came towards the beach, they ordered all the wounded men to walk around the headland, where they had set up a machine gun. The men were forced into the sea, and they were all shot dead with the machine gun. The nurses heard the quick succession of gunfire before the Japanese came back towards the women, sat down and then cleaned the blood off their bayonets, and also clean their rifles. A Japanese officer then ordered 22 nurses and one civilian woman to walk into the water near where their station was, and as this happened, a machine gun fired into the women. Every single one except for Vivian Bullwinkle was killed and executed in the surf. Bullwinkle survived the war and then documented what happened on Banker Island, and her evidence was also told at the Tokyo War Crimes Tribunal. There was also evidence that the women were assaulted before they were executed, and Bullwinkle was not allowed to speak about this after the war, and it's claimed she was silenced by the Australian government to not speak about this. But the perpetrators of this crime escaped any form of punishment. But this was just one atrocity committed against women during the Second World War by the Japanese army. Inside of Alexandra Hospital, for example, many women who worked as nurses were killed by the advancing forces and soldiers, and today many of the crimes against women and the torture and horror that they faced have not been brought to life. There were many thousands of women who were killed needlessly and subject to horrific ordeals at the hands of the Japanese, and many soldiers executed and brutally subjected women to barbarism and savagery. Today many of the war crimes have not been apologised for or compensated for, and they remain some of the most horrific acts of the Second World War. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.